process. Cooking with this type of charcoal is just like cooking over a campfire. At this factory, they begin by making a slurry, a mixture of raw materials that harden into ceramic material when fired at high temperature. The company won't divulge the exact composition of its slurry, other than to say that the main ingredients are water, clay, and feldspar. Another team assembles the two-part plaster mold, with which they'll cast the base of the grill. After cleaning off residue from the previous casting, they clamp the parts together. The mold has two funnels, one through which they pump the watery slurry into the mold, and the other for the air, which exits as the slurry fills the gap between the two parts of the mold. They let the slurry set for several hours to allow the plaster mold to absorb 80% of the water, leaving a firm but still moist casting. After removing the top part of the mold, they slice off the accumulation at the base of both funnels. They cut out a rectangular hole near the bottom for the sliding draft door which lets cold air into the grill. Then, using a vacuum attached to a hoist, they remove the heavy grill base from the mold. They repeat this casting process with two-part molds for the other ceramic parts of the grill, the top, called the dome, and the firebox, which sits inside the base and holds the charcoal. After each casting, they scrape and sand away the excess that oozed out of the mold and hardened. To remove the remaining moisture, they roll the cast parts into a dryer. For the next 30 hours, blowers circulate air gradually heated to 82 degrees Celsius. After a cool down, the base and dome undergo a final touch-up to ensure their exterior surface is pristine. Next stop, the automated glazing station. The conveyor spins the parts under a shower of ceramic glaze. A worker checks the coverage and sprays a touch-up where required. The glaze dries in about 20 seconds. Workers vacuum up the excess then temporarily assemble the grill parts for firing. They place the firebox inside the base, the base plate at the bottom of the firebox, and the dome on top of the base. They fire the grills in a huge kiln. Over 24 hours, they gradually increase the temperature to more than 1300 degrees Celsius, hold it there for a set time, then gradually cool down. This firing process triggers a chemical reaction that transforms the clay-based slurry into a hard, heat-resistant ceramic material and turns the glaze on the surface into black glass. Assembly of the grill begins with the stainless steel draft door on the base. Next, they spread adhesive on the top edge of the base and apply a gasket made of heat-resistant material. This creates an air seal between the base and the dome, which they now attach with a hinge. They insert the firebox and stamp it. Then they glue a gasket around the neck of the dome and install the top vent. Now the last few components. The cast iron grate that holds the charcoal the porcelain coated cooking grates and the thermometer. After lighting the charcoal, you adjust the airflow with the draft door and top vent. To shut down the grill, you fully close the draft door and top vent to cut off the air supply and extinguish the fire. <laughs>